Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. Last week, we started the discussion about organ transplant and we talked about everything on the recipient end. Today, we're going to further discuss how somebody becomes an organ donor and what criteria they need to meet. So next, let's talk about the donor evaluation. So the organ donors are evaluated. It can be somebody who is living. The most common example of this is a living donor kidney transplant. Some people will donate one of their kidneys because you can still live a normal life with one kidney, but many times it is a deceased donor. So there are specific groups who come to the hospital and might evaluate a potential donor. And again, this is a third party. This is not the hospital evaluating the patient for organ donation. It is typically an outside group that comes and evaluates a organ donor to see if they meet the criteria because the organ needs to be healthy in order to give it to somebody else. So if those organs are failing, if somebody's in the hospital with multi-organ failure, then they're not going to be a donor. Even if somebody wants to donate their organs and they had previously listed themselves as an organ donor, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be able to donate their organs. There are multiple medical tests that are done. A lot of times they do different lab tests to see the condition of the organ. Sometimes they might request an ultrasound or other types of imaging. And many times I've been asked to do bronchoscopies to evaluate the lungs and see if the lungs are good quality to donate. Another thing to mention, if somebody donates their organs, they might not necessarily always go to a patient. If the donor's organs are not a good enough condition to donate, but they might be a good enough condition to do research. I just want to pause here and be clear just so nothing is misinterpreted. We do not consider every single patient in the hospital or in the intensive care unit for organ donation. There are certain criteria the patients need to meet before the organ donation organization gets involved. These patients are at the end of life and either brain dead or have a devastating neurological injury or a prognosis where they would not survive off of life support. And even if they are examined and reviewed by the organ donation organization, their family may never be approached for organ donation because they may not even be a candidate. The patient's organs must be in good condition in order for them to be considered for organ donation. So again, I just want to emphasize that every patient in the hospital and in the intensive care unit are not considered. They must meet very specific criteria in order to be considered for organ donation, and then the family must consent to organ donation. This is the way that organ donation works in the United States. I cannot speak for other countries. If you work in another country or have experienced organ donation in another country, please leave a comment below and let us know how it works where you live. So once a donor is identified, it's very time sensitive. So again, there is a third party that comes and evaluates the donor to see if their organs are in a condition to donate. And of course, they have to get consent from the patient's family or next of kin in order to proceed with the donation process, even if they're listed as an organ donor. They still need to get consent to do this process. Then the recipient's physicians are notified that there is an organ offer. In that case, they get the information regarding the donor's organs. They're able to review the imaging, any relevant labs and medical history to determine if they are going to accept this offer on behalf of their patient. Once the offer has been accepted, it is a very time sensitive process. So the surgical team for the recipient will go and retrieve the organ. This is called organ procurement. So 
many times they are flown out to the place where the donor is and they wait for the organ to be harvested. When they retrieve the organ, now there are many different types of devices that will continue perfusing that organ, giving that organ blood supply while it's en route. And then they go to the OR where the recipient is waiting. So a couple of things to mention about this process. When a donor is identified and they are undergoing the organ transplant process, that patient's medical team has nothing to do with the organ transplant process. The care of that patient once they become a donor is taken over by the organ donation organization. And this is to avoid conflicts of interest and ethical dilemmas. So the donor's medical team continues to treat that patient up until the point that they become an organ donor. And then they're off the case. Then the donor's surgical team that harvests the organs has nothing to do with the medical team that took care of the donor or the medical team taking care of the recipient. And many times this is not even at the same hospital, which is why the recipient's team needs to fly out to get the organ. Part of the team will be going to retrieve the organ. Part of the team will be prepping the recipient and most likely starting the procedure to start removing the prior organ while they're waiting for the healthy organ to arrive. One other thing to mention is during the organ harvesting process, there's still one more step for the recipient's team and that's direct visualization. If they go to evaluate the organ and it does not look healthy on inspection, they may still decline the offer. They might get that far in the process and still say, this is not a suitable organ for my patient. This doesn't happen often, but it can happen because again, even with all of the lab tests and imaging and such that they were able to review before they went to retrieve the organ, they might not be able to see until the donor is opened up that the organs are actually not as healthy as they thought they were. So again, once the organ is retrieved, they're on the clock in terms of how much time the organ can be outside of the body. There's also a time in terms of how much the patient's circulation can be cross-clamped and waiting for the organ. So this is a very time-sensitive process. Following the surgery, the patient arrives in the intensive care unit and the management is specific regarding which organ the patient received. They are followed by the transplant teams for that particular organ. And like I said, some people might receive two or three organs at a time, and that can make it a little bit more complex. We monitor patients for acute rejection while they're in the intensive care unit, and we wanna make sure that we do everything to support this new organ. I'm gonna discuss in individual videos what this process looks like for each organ, because like I said, some of the immediate post management very much depends on which organ the patient received. And finally, like I said previously, the recipient does need to take immunosuppression. They're now an immunocompromised patient. We do not want their immune system attacking their new organ. We don't want it to recognize it as foreign. The body needs to believe this has always been a part of it so it doesn't start rejecting the new organ because acute rejection, again, is a catastrophic event and it might lead to the patient dying. And as I said previously, there are many things that we do to prevent acute rejection and chronic rejection. The patient does need to take their immunosuppressants to minimize the chance of this happening. So organ donation does save lives and it does improve quality of life for many people. It is a long process. It is a difficult process and it's difficult for the patient before and after the procedure. But after the recovery, the patients can go on to live a normal life. Like I said, I'm going to be making videos about the individual organs. There are some differences depending on which organ is being transplanted. And again, it is Donate Life Month. I'm going to leave some information below about how to become a registered organ donor. And if you have any 
more questions about organ donation, let me know below. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in hearing more about the intensive care unit and organ failure in general, don't forget to subscribe. Next week, we're gonna start talking about liver failure.